Welcome to another episode of the Dentology Podcast, where we discuss the business of dentistry. In this podcast series, we'll be discussing all the non-clinical aspects of dentistry, from goodwill values, finance, marketing, how to buy and sell a dental practice mindset, through to where you can invest your money in team management issues. My name is Andy Acton, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Strevens. Let's jump straight into it. So welcome to the latest episode of Dentology. And today our guest is Stuart Thompson, who's the Managing Director of Mark Allen Dental Media, having sold his publishing company, George Warman Publishing, to this group several years ago. Um, having worked in the dental publishing for over 35 years, we're going to get an insight on the, how the profession's changed, how publishing's evolved, and also how dentistry has embraced these changes. So publishing back in the early 80s was definitely not digital. But whilst technology's moved on, has the way publishing as an education, marketing, and advertising tool changed much? Let's find out. Welcome, Stuart. How are you doing, Stuart? Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, Morning, Stuart. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm amazed, I'm absolutely amazed that you've invited me onto, onto one of your business podcasts. You know? So, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely honoured to, uh, to, to, to come in this morning. And, oh, you're dental royalty, Stuart. Don't give us that <laughs> nonsense. Absolute yeah. dental royalty. R- rumour r- rumor has it that I know something about dentistry. But, um, but you know, my, my career is publishing for 35 years, of which 22 of those but it's, it, uh, I yeah. don't so let's 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 roll back. So I have this notion that publishing houses back in the eighties was smoke and desk lamps and newspapers and magazines scattered everywhere. Cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. yeah the ash, ash built up in an ashtray. So let, let's roll back forty years. What what was the reality like of publishing back in that era? Well, well it's, it's it, great question and, and and lovely times actually. Um, not being the brightest star in the sky, I was kind of rolled out into into get a job in publishing in uh, as as what in those days we called a copy chaser, and 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 publishing was was uh, was all about kind of colour separations and separations and, and printing presses. And my, and my knowledge about printing presses is is is, is, is not that strong, but my, my job was you, you know turning up and chasing the advertisers. Uh, to send their copy in, so we could actually get, get, cut and paste it and glue it, and then get, get, glue glue the adverts. Glue the adverts. Glue the the adverts. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you, you used to take you used to take copy seriously. You used to take copy on a on a, on the back of a fag packet, and 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 then you used to you used to send it to the secretary. She used to type it out on an old typewriter. Get the old ding out, and then put it put it in the file, and then it used to then get set to what what we call typesetters, and then they kind of made it into the kind of uh, uh, um, um, pre film stuff, uh, and the proof, and the films were always four films. I don't know if you remember those tons of films, and there was always black, oh, and, white yeah. magenta, black, black and white magenta inside, and that's how the magazines were made. And it was as simple. The advertisements we used to take, especially the classified advertisement, the lineage. And funny enough, we still do lineage now because you know my publishing career, as you guys know, it's not just dental; it's it, it's farming, and and farm the, the, the farming magazine takes a lot of lineage, and and the, and the difference the way we take it now to way we to way we made it then it, it, it is absolutely amazing. But you're right; it was just billowing the smoke. You know, every everybody had. Everybody had a blue shirt with a white collar. If if you can kind of remember those in the eighties, the, the the different coloured collars, and that was oh, like, yeah. that, that was your publishing uniform. And it was 25, 30 Bensons a day, and you used to throw it across, throw throw. You know, when you got into classified sales, when you were promoted, and then you got into classified sales, and you had to make a hundred sales calls a day, and got told to bugger off ninety nine times. Um, and you used to smoke forty a day, and and the place was just billowing in smoke. Wow. So, in a weird way, in a, it, but in a really yeah. weird way, I'm actually. I, I, it is nice to hear because that's the way it's always presented. It always mm. looks like it's there. And if you just said no, it was clean and sanitised and and very structured. It, the fact that that is the reality it makes you think yeah. of Life on Mars. Yeah, you know, that TV show where everyone sits <laughs> around and absolutely. everyone opens a drawer, Stuart, and there's a bottle of whiskey in it or something. Absolutely, you know. I mean, sit seriously, you know, it's, it's like the old TV programs and the old detectives who said, you know, you know, Morse, that's sucked out. I mean, when was the last time you mm. we, we, had, we we had a meeting in an office and we got a bottle of you know teachers out and said, <laughs> and, 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 and it, <laughs> but it did, your boss. Perhaps, you know, we, perhaps we should bring it back. <laughs> you know Can you imagine? Next meeting you've got. It doesn't quite work on Zoom, though, does it? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, uh, no, no good for heartburn. That's another story. But, you, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's, that was reality in, in the 80s. The, the reality was that that's how we made it. And that mm. was the, the, the easy way to do it. So you, but know, you said something, Stuart. There about, were five you said- processes before you, got your, before you got your magazine out. There were five processes, five different forms of printing processes. And there were, you know, five middlemen that we don't use anymore. Just don't well, use. But, but you were saying about the adverts, you were saying, you know, um, just an off the cuff remark about you make 99 phone calls or you make 100 phone calls and 99 told you to, to bugger off. Yes. In the early days when you were doing that, did that help you build resilience? Because I imagine yeah. at that time selling stuff on the phone, you probably did get told to, to bugger off a lot. And in fact, you probably yeah. still do. Yeah. So that, does that, does yeah. that build that resilience that you need for that world? Well, the, 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 listen, I'm, I, I, I am a, a very, very kind of old traditionalist about about business. I think I think everybody in any business they actually do, and I can only I'll speak in publishing because it's very. The, do you know what? Out of all the ten ten kids that started in the classified department, I'm I'm the only one that carried on as a career. Everybody off. Someone got offered a job for you know three grand a year flogging flogging photocopiers, but you know I was you know my my first salary was two thousand one hundred pounds a year. And 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 your first ad, and I still remember my first ad. It was to a lady called the London Tool Company, and she was called Mrs. McQueenie, and she gave me twenty-seven quid for a four by one. And I'll never forget that. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I'll never forget that. And my first face-to-face sale, and I still remember this as well, was a guy called Tony Avon, and he he had his own weighing company. So I used to work on a magazine called Factory Equipment News, and on a, and the big publishing. Funny enough, the big publishing early eighties was manufacturing. And that's where you see change in publishing is, is, is one of the big publishers now. We were an industrial nation when I got into publishing. So your, your, your magazines, the big magazines were, were funny enough, design engineering. They were factory equipment news. They were what's new in industry. And these were huge 200 page magazines. And, uh, and, and, and now, and now you, Mark Allen owns a few industrial magazines. They're probably 30 pages big. And, and that is a severe change. And where the power in publishing was, where the real money was, it was it was industrial publishing rather than what we kind of call in, in medical publishing or, or, or farming or, or whatever. It, the big power was uh, industrial publishing. That's a real interesting sort of non, uh, non-financial non economic data, isn't it? In the fact mm. of, you know, we were a manufacturing nation, so therefore there was publications. And probably if we were still a manufacturing nation, there would be more of those publications than there are now because we've moved away from that to a service culture. Mm. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a real interesting... So I yeah, assume there's, yeah, there's, I mean, there's I mean, probably an Instagram filter magazine out there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for how probably. To... <laughs> probably. I mean, you know, I could give you some stuff in it. The magazines when I first cranes today, you know, <laughs> it's the only place you could buy a crane. You know, it, 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 modern power systems. You know, what are they? You know, it, it, it was incredible, incredible. But you know, I mean, I'll, I'll ask you about the magazine in terms yeah. of how it's evolved. But before we do that, yeah. so what was your what was your segue into dentistry? So obviously, you started out in publishing all yeah. those years ago. And then, how did you kind of end up in the in the profession? Well, I got headhunted basically, and and it drills really today. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a good publisher on cranes. Um, um, basically, the guy who owned George Warman Publishing was a guy called John Sieber. The history of George Warman Publishing is is is, is that we George, John Sieber used to used to run a a, a, a a medical publishing, a pharma publishing business, and we used to own the doctor. So in and that's where the money was. The, the money was, was in pharma publishing and, and the drug industry. And, and then the early 80s, the drug industry, when they, when, let's say when Zantac launched or Prozac launched a drug, they took, they took 25 right-hand pages, these companies. They had to spend 5% of their development fee on advertising the product. And it was all about a prescription. So he then launched the dentist as such. So John launched the dentist and it's a similar kind of approach to the doctor. Anyway, cut long story short, he sold to Reed, and then the magazines Reed, um, they, they looked at the dental titles, and, and the dental titles for Reed as, as this big corporate publishing business, the, the bottom lines weren't, weren't great. So we bought them back. So John bought them back. And John had then, you know, sold his business, and then he was 56. And it's by pure fluke that uh, I was recommended as a young publisher 
who who still got their hands dirty. So 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 basically, would make a cup of coffee and and go and see clients and 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 try and infiltrate into an industry because actually actually that is what you do in publishing. You you, you concentrate. You you, ha- you have to kind of immerse yourself in in the in the publishing world in the in the, in the mm. business you're, you're 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 communicating to. And if you don't understand that, then then you shouldn't be in publishing. Mm-hmm. So to answer your question, I was headhunted. You know, headhunted as as a young star. I was uh, a publishing director of uh, uh, the local authority. Uh, how old were you then, Stuart? I was thirty two. Right, I was thirty two, and, and been in publishing, and, and you know, had been a sales director, and 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 you know, I, I was the sales manager at uh, the Architects Journal, which is a fantastic, fantastic journal. So I had the experience of coming in. And, and understanding a journal, as well as being able to communicate and without being too basic, flog advertising space, which is which is the key for a controlled circulation title because it only survives on your money, guys. You know, mm. uh, and 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 it was also I was also very lucky because I was asked to buy. I, 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 I was given a plan to buy into the business, and we also had this title called Dental Update, which was this sleeping giant, which which I think mm. I brought you to tears over. Uh, so we had this beautiful kind of uh, um, flotilla of journals. You had this battle, you had this aircraft carrying dental update and then protected it with the dentist and 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 and, and the business kind of thrived from there, really. So that's how I got into it. Somebody knew somebody who who, who they trusted me to come in and and and, and bring the business mm. up against our competitors. Mm. So obviously publishing is a as an industry has changed massively from being kind of, you know, you sticking adverts on pages to being, you know, digital now. So on the publishing side, a lot's changed. Dentistry is a really fast moving market. You know, the profession changes, you know, weekly with new tech. Does the way that the, the business evolve has to be reflected in publishing. So as you've got publishing is moving as a separate market and you've got dentistry moving, do those two need to kind of work together to make sure you're representing the, the profession in the best way possible? Uh, Andy, I think, I, think, I think we get on it in a twist and, uh, about publishing of what we actually need to do. What, what, what we have to do is provide our audience dentists information that they don't know, okay? And there's two ways you do it. There's two ways. You do a clinical information, and your clinical information is keeping them abreast of the finest techniques that they should require to see a patient. It's as simple as that. And then you invest in your editorial product, and that's the way you go forward on one side. On the other side is um, is the business side, and that has changed dramatically because actually dentistry, because of the private element, because of corporate, the business element of dentistry has changed dramatically because actually it's not a gravy train like 20 years ago when everybody got fee, 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 you know, fee per item or item per fee or, or whatever, the, whatever the phrase is. You, you know, there's a different ways to manage. And, 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 and the real sad thing about dentists is they will do five years clinically and they'll do 30 minutes about, uh, mm. and, and this is yeah. your expertise and this is your expertise far better than mine is that they're actually not trained to actually run a business and how to do a business properly. But actually, that is the real change in dentistry, is the enforcement of they do have to know about how to run a business. They could probably, dentists can actually, are, are very clinically sound. They need to be just updated on the latest information by guys that actually, the guys that they respect and their peers. But when it comes to running a practice or running a business or, or making business and financial decisions, that is our role, and that has changed dramatically in, mm. our, or in our editorial approach. But the fact is, the real change in, in dentistry and publishing is how we deliver it. And, and, mm. and I think that's the key, and that's the key conversation, is, mm. is how we deliver that information. And I think the pandemic's shown us, isn't it, that there's been massive change you know, in dentistry, virtual consultations. Uh, in, in very few cases, it, it was a thing. Whereas in the last year, they've come on in, in leaps and bounds. So given that there's a lot more digitization happening, yeah. um, is, the, is the role of traditional publishing, as in magazines and, and papers, is, is the, are we going to call time on that soon? And it's all going to be websites and digital platforms and, and technology-led, or is there still a place for that, that physical magazine that you hold? I mean, I think that's I think that's the that, that, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Really, 
is it, it I could, the one thing about magazine delivery it's proactive okay it comes to you digitization it doesn't come to you you have to decide to go and get it mm. you mm. have to decide to go and walk in and say this is what I want to know Okay. Now, I, th- I think about two years ago, I think I said, that, you, you know, trends, you can only kind of set trends when there's an exchange of exchange of cash. OK, I only get an idea of what people want when they're given a choice of, of how to spend their money. Mm. And I can only kind of relate this to dental update. At the mm. moment, dental update costs you 150 quid. OK, it costs you 150 quid to get a digital copy and it costs you 150. It costs, sorry, it costs you 150 quid to get a print copy, but it costs you 140 quid to get a digital copy. Okay. The circulation of dental update is 8,100, but 7,400 are print. Now, I, can, I am giving anybody a choice. I am giving you a choice how to read it. Okay. My job is to, is to print something, whether it's on a billboard, whether it's on a bus shelter, or whether it's on a magazine, or whether it's on a website of information that actually you're prepared to pay for. And at this moment, people actually say, do you know what? Out of that choice of billboards, magazines, digit, uh, uh, websites, I'd like the magazine. So mm. that, I can, I, I, but the real problem is that I still have to provide the yeah. other three ways to deliver it. Mm. So my mm. bottom lines are, are hit more because in the old days, I just sent you a magazine. Mm. That's a fascinating stat, isn't it? I think if you'd yeah, have asked people what the, the choice and, and the split would have been, I don't think you'd have thought that still the overwhelming majority would have taken a, I, I a published it, magazine. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? I, I've started going up on a, getting out on a Sunday and wandering down and getting myself a Times and then sitting in the garden, if the weather's good enough, drinking a coffee. And there's something very mm. nice, isn't there, about reading. You know, I've got a Kindle and you yeah. can do it on your iPad, but there's something about having that physical paper. And I wonder if it's the same with, I think it's a with bit dental like update. Your book. You could just take it with well, you. It's like, like reading yeah. a book, isn't it? I think something like dental update, guys, I think it's, it, it, it's bloody hard to read on your phone. Uh, it, and, it, and, it, and, and, it's, and it's hard to read online. And, and the, way to, you, the way you get the articles is, do you actually read? Do you actually read stuff looking, looking at a screen? I don't think we're actually trained to read looking at a screen. We're trained to read by looking down at something at the moment. Now, whether that's an iPad or whether that's a phone, but we actually don't read, read stuff on desktops. You know, these flicking newspapers, they, 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 they're a great kind of, you know, uh, um, in-between product. But, I mean, I wouldn't read 90 pages while staring at my screen. I wouldn't. I, I, but I think, great question, when do we call time on it? I don't think we call time. I think, I think the youngsters will call time. The youngsters that are mm. coming through that live on Instagram that actually get their news on Instagram, just live and die on their phone, probably won't read, you know, when does the BBC call time? Because, you know, I've got, I've got step, I've got a stepdaughter who's never watched the TV. It's YouTube, it's Netflix, and it's her phone. That's it. That's it. Mm. And I think a lot of it, we, we, we met a guy years ago and he had this line and he said, you've got to be where the eyeballs are. Mm. So well, wherever, yeah. wherever the eyeballs are, that's where you've got to be. So if the kids are on YouTube, you've got to get your content onto that channel because that's where they're looking at that time. Absolutely. And I think the challenge is that their eyeballs keep moving. So they and might then, be on really Snapchat or TikTok or Instagram or yeah. YouTube and or whatever. And their eyeballs don't stay still for very long. No. And, I think and, that's and the they thing. don't. And they don't. But, you know, we've all had to keep on moving with our eyeballs or our, or our ear holes without being so because we used to listen to the radio. But li- listen... The only way, the only way Winston Churchill communicated by us in, in 1939 is the radio. What do we still listen to? Yeah. We still listen to the radio. It hasn't died. It's actually, it's just there are, there are just different ways to deliver the information. But that doesn't matter, guys. It really doesn't matter. The most important thing, people will still buy the information wherever you put it, if it's good. If you, as publishers, we have to supply the information. It doesn't matter where. They will buy it if we're supplying mm. the right information. And you want to get right content right, right first. And it's content. It's content. We look at all this, you, you, you know, we, we do these webinars. Great. It's great. It's great. It's the content that people go, yeah. And if you've got the right brand, you can link your content mm. 
to 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 the webinar. Fantastic. I think there's, I think there's real nuggets for dentists in here as well because okay, we're talking about publishing, but that underlying message of you've got to present good content in the right place for your audience, multi level, uh, and whether that's patients or in your case trying to get through to dentists as as, as a publisher, that message of understanding what your audience want and putting it in a channel and in a medium that suits them mm. applies to every business. And not yeah. hanging your flag on one flagpole. Yes. And the fact of saying actually it's got to be a multi-level yeah, approach, I, I, I isn't mean, it? There is a danger. You, there's a danger that we, we become too commercial as well. Um, and, 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 and the digital the digital explosion kind of, you know, takes out the, the, the mystique out of promotion, you know, You'll, 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 you'll do a, a YouTube video. It's, it's just an advert selling your stuff. What you, what you, what the, the, the way to kind of be, be in a mix is, is to be part of the carrier. And this is where publishers, this is where publishers, I think, and, and all of us in dentistry, you, you know, uh, 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 should, should, should actually say we are, we are, we are, we are the, 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 the nucleus of, of, of that audience. They're coming to see information. You're buying to be part of it. It's just, it's very simple. It's very simple promotion. The reason why baked beans, Heinz baked beans advertise on Coronation Street is the audience. Mm. It's the target. They're, that's their target market who buys baked beans. You know, if there was just a sea of baked bean adverts at, from, from 7.30 to 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night, nobody would watch it. But they're watching mm. Coronation Street. And then they are embracing your audience. And that's what publisher, pub, dental publishers are doing. They're not coming to read your, read your webinar or see your webinar. They're coming to actually find stuff out. And you're in it. You're party of it. You're, you're, you are party to, 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 to the product that that is bringing, bringing that audience together. And the danger is that we, we isolate publishers and forget what we are. Mm. Is that, you know, we, 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 we are bringing that audience together. I wonder as the age demographic of publishers and you know, company owners changes because of their own experience of how they digest information, that you will end up with people pushing the digital route because it, it's must yeah. it, you know it's cheaper to deliver the digital route isn't it than it is actually printing loads of magazines i wonder is you know in yeah. in years time well you know will you get people that will be 32 coming into that publishing and they'll say actually no we don't worry about paper that's for old people you know <laughs> yeah and and, and and that's happening now Mm, right. Yeah, that's what you, you, you know. The the, the 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 young marketing marketing guys, you know, are are are, are just naively, I think, naively just looking at, at social media as a form of it. You know, but mm. what the what the youngsters and what probably we did when we were their age is we actually forgot that, that us old farts still exist, and, yeah. and we actually have to communicate the way exactly. Mm. You know. We still go and read the Times. You know, do you buy the Times online? No, I go to the Sunday Times and I actually then get the culture out and I go and read that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the danger is that they will miss out on people like you and I. But you know, the big difference between you and I and communicating thirty-two-year-olds is that we've been in the business for thirty years and we've got a few quid. We are the mm. purchasers. You know, mm. so you've got to you've got to target me. I'm the buyer. Mm, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the young guys kind of just want to communicate the way they have been communicated to, but they're they're just on the ladder. They've got. But, but also, I think there. you I think you consume different information in different ways. Yes. So. You know, if you would want yeah, some, some yeah. soundbite information and, and perhaps a, a 10 seconds of inspiration, you know, if you hop on Instagram, there's, there's, there's thousands of, you know, motivational quote type <laughs> stuff. But if you want something that's, that's deeper, more meaningful, and, you know, using your example, Stuart, about dental update, you know, something that's clinical and it's got some meat to it, that that may not lend itself mm. to, to that sort of platform. So Andy, I think you, you I, get your information from different places. I, I honestly believe that, you know, going back to the initial discussion about when will paper die, I don't think paper will ever die in academic publishing. I really don't, because that is actually, that one, it's serious. You, you know, one, it's serious. What I do think is that what has been an amazing is, is, is the digitisation of the archives from paper publishing into this massive great archive that we have. So, you know, you walk into a room and, you know, you you, 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 you come here to Guildford. I've got every single copy since 1970 of Dental Update. It takes a lot of space. Yeah. But what I can do is I can turn you off now and I can go to 1970, oh, well, 
could, I could go to, I think we started, the start of the, electro, the electronic kind of archive started in 19, 1980, 1999. I've got at my fingertips 25 years copies of Dental Update. And it's not mm. taking one hour and it's not collecting dust. And it's the most amazing way you can have. So yeah. the new copy comes out and then the beautiful archive. And academic publishing is prime for research. It's about who's written what in, you know, Trevor Burt has written a piece on, 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 a, on amalgam separation and the use of amalgam. And it was in volume one, 2001. Mm. Out, of it, out of interest, Stuart, do you keep one hard copy of each run yes yeah so you I've got, i have a library we have a library for the dentist we have and it's beautiful you know yeah. you, you know i mean the, the, the big change in publishing paper publishing which you, you know we kind of forgot is 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 computerization computer to play i mean that revolutionized us you, you know we saved we saved one hundred and fifty thousand pounds overnight because steve jobs wow. invented invented the apple so, you know, we stopped. We didn't have colour separators. We didn't need to make them. We didn't have typesetters. We didn't need them. We, the, the, those four middlemen that I mentioned at the start of this chat, gone. And they mm. went in two weeks. Wow. It's dramatic, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that's the biz. You know, if we're really looking at chat about publishing and the way things have changed, it's these poor so-and-sos. Mm. They're, they're, they're out of work. I'm just having to plug my information in and then send it to you online. This guy isn't needed. Mm. This guy was redundant. In t- I mean, if you go down to the, 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 the old printing, the old typesetter there is Clark and Work in uh, Bowling Green Lane, and it was just a sea of typesetters, and that's where they're gone. All went in, in I'll tell you what, when it was, it was in January 2001. It was the whole thing, wasn't it? Whopping, was it? Whopping print? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there there was strikes and all sorts, yeah. wasn't there? Just went computer to play. And yeah. you've got all the journals. I mean, you, you know, I mean, you, you've got all the journals. They're just typing all their stuff on there. They're not, they're not putting on an as going back to the typewriter. They're not typing it. They're sending yeah. it to the top. They were just going straight onto the computer. The designer, the, then the chief sub-editor just puts it into position. And they press a button and it goes, gets straight to a PDF, gets, gets imaged onto the plate and then sent out. That is why we're still in business. Mm. It's because we can afford to. You know, yeah. if we still had all you know, the, 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 the advertising, you know, advertising rates have been static for years because you, you, you um, and we've survived on costs, you know, mm-hmm. on, costs on, on those costs because it's very expensive to send mm-hmm. 80,000 out for a child. I, I suppose it's because yeah. there's yeah. lots of channels. So therefore, when there was a magazine, you would spend money on the magazine. But if you've got like 10 different routes, oh, um, the answer is you'll spread your budget across those 10 different right, routes. Where you've got so much choice. And look, <laughs> we've, we've talked about lots of different platforms. I know over the years, you've been heavily involved in, in Dental Showcase over yes. the years. And as, a, as another yeah. channel, I, I, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and I know it's not publishing, but it's, it's another channel of getting to people. Um, obviously, we've, we've had COVID and the pandemic, so there hasn't been physical exhibitions for a while. But when they come back, what do you think the future is of, of dental exhibitions? How do you see those kind of panning out in the future? I, 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 think, I think the conversation is really handy to expand to the future of exhibitions. You know, it, 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 you know we're, we're, just, we're, just one, we're just one industry that has, has suffered, you know, Looking back, I'm, I'm glad I wasn't in the exhibition industry during COVID because <laughs> it, it, I, I think I'd, I'd rather been an airline. Um, well, we saw some people, one of the guys we used, they'd been in business, was it 50 years, yeah. over 50 years, and they yeah. went out of business. So exactly. Like, yeah. 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 And you no, sort of think when you're 50 years that you'd probably think you were safe. Yeah. Yeah, he had a few quid in the back. Um, dental showcase, it, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, yeah, I think there is. I think I, th- I think exhibitions will come back. I think I think people want to come back and meet people. I think uh, it, certain people won't. Certain people won't feel the need. I do think companies are going to support exhibitions because there's something about seeing and feeling a product. And I'm talking more equipment. You know, the big digital products. Mm. You know, obviously, also the, the the oral health products. You know, people actually do like to go and see the new kind of toothbrush that ends up cleaning your sink as well. You know, it is it is a. I'm that's a different head. <laughs> I hope so. Not, not in my house. 
<laughs> Very uh, useful uh, for jewellery, I found. Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm funny enough, it's, funny enough. It's, good, it's good to get in rubbish out of your golf clubs as well. Um, <laughs> We're not impressing the profession with this conversation, yeah, honestly. Yeah, uh, and it's, and it, and but Phillips and Braun are very happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, I do think I do think it will take time for people to come back. I mean, some some stats I hear that you know in the autumn, like for like registrations are about sixty percent down to two years ago, uh, and and in September it's sixty percent down, and then registrations in October it's fifty percent down. And it gradually gets better the, the, the further out of, of COVID, the further mm. out of fear. Mm. Um, me, I think, I think it's a fantastic meeting place to come to, 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 to join. I think it, mm. I think it brings the industry together. It brings the profession together, and that's key. And 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 if if the, if that doesn't continue, I think it will be a sad place. But that's just a personal opinion. Mm-hmm. That may be a fifty-five-year-old who actually likes meeting people, actually gets more out of actually being in an exhibition for three days and actually seeing people and communicating. Mm. With someone, maybe maybe I'm still a, a magazine reader rather than a digital. I think I think I think the short term, medium term need for people to get back to physical events, whether that's um, you know dental showcase or going to a gig or going to a football so, match or, or, or whatever or it is, I think that that need to socialise with other humans is still still quite strong. I think I, the, I agree the, with you in a way, Andy. That, I mean, I think that's a, that, I think that's a super point, and you, you know, we go back to we go back to the young about changes into in their reading habits okay i could talk to my stepdaughter she actually went off to reading festival there's a hundred thousand kids who want to be there yeah they're mm. not frightened to be there they are they have been without that interaction but well, we're social yeah. creatures aren't we, don't yeah, we? But, yeah. we are social creatures and, and and that's great and and do you know what people who enjoy going to exhibitions will go back people who never went to them will never go anyway Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so the fact is, I think it will be a very, very sad place if we're not going to see exhibitions. Is it a, the question though? Is is do 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 people get value for money? So for, I was going to say it's a VFM, <laughs> isn't it? Really, is the do you yeah. get your value out of it? I'd imagine. Yeah. And 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 with dentistry changing so dramatically, you know, if, you, if you've got fifty percent of dentists that are working for corporates. It's hard for exhibition companies to to for instance, you guys. You know, if I sent you fifty, you know, a hundred dentists, you'd go great. And I said they're all corporates. You'll go thanks. You just charged me a fortune to send send me someone on the stand that doesn't buy. Mm. I think that that is a problem you, mm. uh, with exhibitions. Is is the is that next conversation of how dentists that's are interesting. being provided? That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because at the moment, the market is still owner manager you know yeah. it's not corporate but there are more you know that that area is growing but also dental practice it's quite interesting is that the number of people that we've spoken to are setting up squats and setting up new practices so it is quite interesting as what that pace of change you know will there yeah. be more people or will there be as many people setting up new practices as selling to corporate so effectively you it's end balanced. up with the same going up or yeah. is it going to go the other way are there going to be corporates who will then mm-hmm. suddenly say well hang on a minute not too sure I'm making as much money as I thought I was going to make out of this, the PE guys especially. Yeah. So then they're going to go, right, I'll tell you what, I might dump a few practices. It's, it's quite interesting how it's evolving. I, 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 listen, you, you, you guys are the best in the business on this. So, so how I see it is exactly dentistry and, and, and selling to a corporate is exactly me selling to a corporate when I got to 50, 50, 55 and, and somebody offers you some money to sell your business. Do you carry on? Or do you? When I was thirty-two, I wanted to run a business. When I was fifty-five, I didn't. I think the young, the young dentists want to come in and do the squats, and the older guys that have been on the treadmill. And I apologise if I'm speaking out of hand. That have been doing dentistry for 35, 40 years, and somebody comes in and says you can work for four or five days with us and and still maintain your clients, but I'm going to take the stress out of your life. From personal experience. I don't think that's a bad idea. And you've got the young guys that actually want the career and want to build build into dentistry. Well, that's what our business is built. Yes, Frank Taylor, that's what it's built upon, is those young guys saying, I'm coming in and... uh, 
would you like to hang on? Because most of them yeah. will, will keep someone on. Because I think one of the things we, we noticed is that when we first started doing it, most, most young guys came in and got rid of the old duffer. Yeah. They'd sort of say, right, well, you're off. I'm not interested. Yes. But I think one of the th- biggest things we've noticed is that either it's because the practices are way more expensive than they used to be. Mm-hmm. So they've spent a lot more money or whether they've actually recognized that whilst that guy, whether you know, male or female had been there for 25 years, they actually ran a successful business. Mm-hmm. So why would you get rid of that knowledge and experience and make sure you retained it so as that you can learn from that person? That's the biggest thing I've noticed is that they yeah. don't get rid of no. that. They, they don't say, right, well, okay, your, your technology, I'm not interested. They say, actually, would you like to stay and learn a bit more? Dentistry is like any other business. You know, you, obviously, there's a slight theme of publishing and dentistry. You know, they didn't get rid of me because actually I run the business for 20 years, and actually I was the centre of of the business, and and it was more valuable for me mm. to stay on and carry on our conversations with guys that I've known. And that's with. smart yeah. to value that 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 expertise and and that skill, and but and, that's and, still and, the and same not and not lose that. Yeah, still yeah. the same for a patient. Sure. Yes, you, you yes. know our relationship as as, as long term business b- 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 business associates is exactly the same as as my mother being comfortable seeing the person that she has actually mm. been to see in dentistry for t- in in her practice. Mm. For years. But we say to clients, the biggest change a business can go through is a change of ownership. You know, it's it's massive in terms yeah. of the culture, how it feels, how it behaves, the leadership, how it's managed, and that all then filters through to the the clients, the patients, the customers yeah. you serve. So if you don't do your best to retain the person for a period of mm. time to make sure that you can manage that change well, you're putting the investment you've made into that business at, at risk. So having yeah, I mean, a, it, a it, smooth it, handover yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, the reason they built, uh, as Chris says, the reason you built the business is successful. There's a reason it's success. You know, you, you, know, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, do you? And, no. and, and I think that is any form, of, any form of business purchase, personally, you know, whether it's publishing, whether it's dentistry, mm. or, 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 or whether it's, mm. you know, whether, whether it's your, your local turf accountant. Yeah. You know, there are people, people go into it, your local landlords, you know, there's a reason why. Uh, 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 your local level. So, mm. the, the, so, but I do think exhibitions are a must. I don't think I don't think any. I don't think I'm I'm going to be the deciding factor about exhibitions for the future. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so, so across I do, hope, I do hope as at the exhibition industry stage. Yeah. So across kind of the publishing world and dentistry, the the progress that's been made, and I know kind of the progress has to kind of follow the market to a certain extent, but it's mostly been good. Have have we lost anything on the way? Is there anything that has kind of fallen off the page or no longer features that that would be a good thing still to have? Or, or doesn't just, it, doesn't it work just like cigarettes that? and scotch? <laughs> probably not a good thing to have. Probably. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think. Listen, the, the the art of publishing is still very similar. I think I think the way my sales sell is, is a bit sad. You know that everybody everybody you know types and send, you, you know we don't have tele sales now. We have email sales. You, you know, and, and now if you don't send a hundred emails and get told to get told to go away ninety nine times by email, you know you're not doing your job. Has that changed? So actually, they don't hear the person's voice. They never speak to them. So I think I think that personal for you, you know the young juniors. The young junior, you know, you come here, they never use the phone lines. <laughs> and I think that is sad. I think it's great. Communicate. Okay, yeah, we're looking at each other, but we're talking, we're hearing each other. But the thing is, their core human skills in the, if you can't, if you can't <laughs> use the phone and have a good telephone conversation, how does that translate when you physically meet people and Absolutely. you need to have a conversation? And I think we've got to be really careful we don't end up mm-hmm. with a generation because we're kind of not a million miles off where people would much prefer to be doing doing this and, and yeah. sending messages but than having we, chats and engaging. Well, we know. Is with our guys, some of our guys, and then they come on board. You know, some of the younger team. It's it's quite a challenge to get them to actually pick up a phone and but make a phone call and receive a phone call. Yeah, yeah. In, in business, though, guys, it, 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 it's it's not so damning to be told no on an email than 
someone telling you to goodbye. Oh, yeah, no, it's easy on an email, as you can hit delete. But part, of life, but part of life is rejection. Part of life yeah. is failure. Yeah, I and know. You, you learn. Oh, you, you turn it into an art form, Stuart. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's, that's the only word I can spell. <laughs> but the thing is, it builds, it builds resilience. It means you have to up your game. It yeah. means you need to have yeah. fresh tactics. You know, if things always just went well, you learn nothing. It's yeah, through exactly. the things that don't go well. That's where you can't. That's where the learning yeah, is. Just, just to keep going, yeah. keep trying, keep going. Yeah, keep so, trying. so you know, you know, putting that to dentistry, you know, vir- 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 virtual, you know, consultations. Let, let's let, let's hope they let, let's hope they're only needed. That they're in, only only needed in certain areas because actually the, the patient relationship uh, um, with the dentist is still key, and that's that's the personal side. Yeah, and that that is when obviously a dentist can flourish, and obviously suggest. Suggest other treatments. Suggest increasing treatments. Offer offer different solutions. Offer different solutions from from you, you know whether it's a bridge, whether it's into an implant, and that is communication, and that mm. is the key. And you know, dent planners have survived on communication well, because they're getting their dentist to sell the product. You, you know, should should they be selling direct to the consumer? I think that is a big question mark. But hey. You, you, you know, and practice plan do the same. You know, practice plan are a very, very good business, and that, and that, and they are talking to their dentists as well. And 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 and, and um, practice plan, uh, uh, their dentists are actually selling the product. Yeah, well, oh, we we sell That's some of our. Best. We sell some of our courses, Stuart, where we talk to people and say, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you have to have like a, 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 a common denominator of the fact you're a dentist. So that's a given that you've got a technical skill. But actually, the, most of the successful dentists are actually just really good communicators. Um, uh, you know, we, we've all met professors, haven't we, that, that are clinically brilliant, but you wouldn't have a pint with them. Whereas other people, that yeah. their skills are just normal, but actually they are the person that, that people gravitate to. It's about how yeah, that relationship is, is presented is the most yeah, important thing. And, 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 and isn't it strange that three, three you know, grumpy old men, but people buy people. People like people. And yeah. that's the key. So the and that key, hasn't changed for, for, and, for years and years. And I don't, and I don't Millennia. think it will. Yeah. <laughs> it will never change because, the, because kids will then mix with their friends and they like their friends at school and that will always change. We are humans. What we didn't like with lockdown is not being able to see people, mm. not being able to see the people we like. And, and that, going back to a business element, wouldn't it be sad if actu- actually the exhibitions, which are this, this, this coming together of people, of products, are, are, are not required? And, mm. and I, I, I would truly be very sad. But I'm looking forward to March 22. I'm looking forward to the, you know, the the the, the first exhibition. Really, what that'll be for? Well, I, I think, think the I BDI think, would be two years. When was the last BDI? I, I, I think, I think 19, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's an exhibition in September uh, in the London Dental Show. Uh, I'm maybe a bit too early, but hey, it's run by a different company. Um, I, I do hope it's successful. For well, I think the BDIA the one is is for me is the sort of the the big. It's, the big show. And I think, you know, the last one would have been, must have been October yeah, 19th. It's, it's, it's the first big show back, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And, and, and hopefully... I think it was two and a half years. Mm. We should be putting, you know, we, 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 what we've got to do is we've got to put on a good show. You know, yeah. we've, got put, we've got to put on a good, a, a good, a good lecture theatre and some good sessions. Lasers, I mean, smoke. Yes. Those sort of like, you know, those things with the football, <laughs> with yeah, flames yeah. and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, as, as you walk in, someone like a big flame or something comes <laughs> out and then rest. they, they oh, introduce you to the uh, the order. You know, as you yeah. walk in, it goes, good afternoon, Dr. Yeah. Patel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Take I think you're. I, th- I think you should be in exhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> you, you missed a trick here. Um, I'm a bit late but, now. <laughs> but you've got to. I, I, I'll be safe. I, I do think a lot more people will do their lectures online webinars. I do think. I do think that because actually people have got used to them. People yeah, yeah, yeah. now can. People now can communicate like we are doing quite hopefully quite successfully today. And I think you know you can actually and with a webinar. If you want a cup of coffee, you don't tell us how you've got a kind of cough and go out. You can go and make one and still listen to still listen to the lecture and come back and sit and touch it. So I don't think do that as a presenter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I don't think I, I don't think they go away. I think 
what we've got to not be careful is turning 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 a webinar into an hour sales pitch. I think that, that could be yeah, yeah, definitely. Time. Yeah, they've got to be educational, oh. haven't they? They've got to yeah, that. yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you, yeah, or, or, or sit seriously. And 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 you, you know, my worries are some companies are, are are forgetting why they go on onto that. You know that that that, that, that is the way they communicate. So you know, mm. the thing well, is, viewers will switch off though. You know, we're all discerning. You know, if yeah, I sign on, yeah. if I signed on to a webinar and basically all it was was a sales pitch, you'd probably get ten minutes from me because I yeah. keep thinking, is it is it actually going to tell me some well, more content. non yeah. non personal data of that? Yeah, company? You come for information and it, goes and, exactly, and it goes exactly why someone buys a magazine, Andy, yeah. because it's it's the content they actually want to read and it's yeah. the content they actually want to listen to. So Stuart, that's that's been that's been brilliant. You've 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 been a superb guest as we as we knew you were. As we knew your, you your were. Stories yeah. are great. I think charting that history and and the business tips in there as well. There's some absolute oh, nuggets right, guys, in there. We, 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 always, we always ask guests. Tenacious. We always, tenacious. Yes. That's, sorry, sorry to butt in. Yeah. I say tenacious. We've got a real thing at the moment about being tenacious and saying yeah. to people, just don't, don't do it once and then be upset when it doesn't work. You just got to keep trying, yeah, evolving, try, try changing, trying. Try, 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 yeah. because you it, you will get it right and it, you will have a success. Okay, you've got to make sure everything works, but I think tenacious is, uh, it's funny, we had a conversation last night, didn't we, about the fact of we don't celebrate the good enough. Yeah. And um, yeah. We, we've started, you know, in our business, we, we're we making sure we celebrate even the little small positives because quite often everyone wants to celebrate some huge, great thing, but there are so many little positives, but we quite often focus on those little negatives. I think in business, business is is more often about lots of small things coming together mm. which then results in a big thing and if you don't celebrate the small things it's a bit like you know do you enjoy the journey or do you enjoy the destination and I think yeah. in business that rarely is there actually a destination so if you're not <laughs> yeah. celebrating those little things on the way um, it can be quite hard mm. work and I encourage anybody to get those little small wins and yeah. celebrate them on, yeah. ongoing. I, I, I mean, today, I think, I think, you've, you, you, I think, you know, to last in, in any one business and mine's publishing, you have to enjoy it. You've got to wake up in the morning and you think, right, you've got to enjoy the people you work with and, and keep going because this, nothing in life comes easy. You know, and, 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 and it's about hard work and, you, you know, whether you're on a building site or whether you're, 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 you're flying a plane, um, it, it, does, it doesn't come easy and you have to learn and keep learning and keep learning every day and, 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 and I've tried you, you know it's getting to the twilight of my career but you know <laughs> I've enjoyed it and, and what I have enjoyed is I think the dental world happens to be a fine place to be a publisher in because there are some bloody good people out there the profession I'm very very lucky I have some very good mates who are senior clinicians inside dentistry and do you know what they are super chaps so you know but uh, it's, it's, it's thank you for putting that for me as well, dentistry. Nah, not at all. Not at all. No, you're a star. You're no, that's a star. brilliant. That's so, really good. So we always ask our guests a couple of questions at the end, just to wrap up. So the first one is: if you could be a fly on the wall in a situation, where would you you like to plant yourself and observe something that's going on? Oh, I said, oh. I think I think I would love to be. I think I would love to be in Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummins' office. I'd have just really like to know how bad it was. I think it would have been just really interesting. And then I would have made a fortune selling it due to the fact of being a publisher. I think you could have sold that story. I think that would have been an interesting scenario is actually getting a real relationship between Cummings and, and, and Johnson during Brexit. What they both really thought yeah, I, I think there's only ever going to be two. I think there's only ever going to be two people that know the answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and they and knowing my luck, they would have spotted me as the fly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second one is if you could meet anybody, um, past, present, fictional, real, who would you who would you like that, to to meet that, that I've never met before? I'd like to meet my dad again. Uh, he's dead. So oh, okay. yeah, be nice. That 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 that'd be something. Uh, I think I would like to meet our new ambassador of trade for Australia, Sir Ian Botham. Uh, it, it, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, the, the last comment was that Australia was just full of prisoners and it's just a big open space of nothing. Now we promoted him as our ambassador of trade to Australia. I think it's a fine promotion. Uh, and, it's one of the uh, finest comebacks in history, though, isn't it? It would be the finest. <laughs> it, it was a century during that and brings. Uh, and brings in a, a, a hundred new cattle, of which my farming guys are absolutely turning in the boat. 
So yeah, Sir Ian Bogan. I think Sir Ian Bogan was. Will so he be fun. allowed in though? <laughs> Yeah, Who knows? He won't be allowed in, of course. He's <laughs> He'll have to do it from like Zoom. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? He, 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 got, he, got, he got told off for smoking some weird stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we're both. Lovely. So you, you've been an absolute gem. You've been a star. Thank you very much indeed. I, I know you're really busy today and you're dashing off, so we appreciate your yeah, time. Yeah, thank you for your time. It's been really good fun. Uh, thanks for the invite and, you know, I hope. Yeah. Uh, I hope we'll, so, ca- uh, we'll catch a pro very much soon. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, look right, at right, yourself. Guys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. 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 Bye. But what an absolute gem Stuart it was. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, he's such good fun anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. That experience is <laughs> really funny. You know, you're talking about what it was like. And in my head, I've got this like fog of smoke. Yeah. And people are like, as you saying, what is it, 40 cigarettes a day? Yeah, yeah, people yeah, with a whiskey. Yeah. But it's like an old world, isn't it? Oh, it's, and it's a, it's a bygone era. Yeah. I, I thought for me, what came out of it is that um, publishing – it hasn't fundamentally changed much. You just need to present information in a format that suits the audience. Mm. Once the technology has changed everything else, you, know, you just need to be where those eyeballs are. Yeah. So there's digital platforms. But I hadn't appreciated when you're talking about um, dental update, just how many people still want the physical, mm. the physical magazine. So whilst so much has changed, you can't drive that much core behavior change in, in humans and people. And I think the thing is to make sure you keep delivering things to people in a style and a format that they want, as opposed to push too hard for something that you want. Yeah, I think that's right. That's right. Yeah. D- go where the consumer wants Absolutely. to go. Go yeah. where the eyeballs are. Yeah, yeah. That was really, really was brilliant. Good. Yeah, it was really interesting. That was great. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dentology, where we discuss the business of dentistry. If you like what you heard, please do subscribe where you found this episode. That would be amazing. And also follow us on Instagram.